Hello everybody, Daryl here from the Toronto Real Estate Show and I'm coming to you with a special solo episode today. Unfortunately, I am not here with my counterpart, pi push up pickle dick. Why can't I speak today? Okay, hello everybody, Daryl here from the Toronto Real Estate Show and I'm coming to you today with a solo episode. I wanted to talk to you about a few articles, some of which we touched on the show this past week, mainly the work from home situation here in the city of Toronto. Now, all of the articles that I'm going to speak about right now are all at our website, torontorealestateshow.com, and you can follow us also on Instagram, at the Toronto Real Estate Show without a W, at Toronto Real Estate Show, S-H-O. Please, if you get any value or entertainment out of these videos, please hit the subscribe button now, hit that like button, hit that bell, and please make a comment. It all helps us with the algorithm and it helps us get these videos out to more and more and more people. So having said that, let's get into the conversation. There's our lovely website. Okay, so we touched on it on the show this week. So many Toronto condos now come with their own co-working spaces. So I mentioned this week that a lot of the developers out there are starting to put special kind of spaces inside the units. Townhouses are now having rooms dedicated to co, or I guess they're not co-working, but they're office spaces. Uh, all of the condo units are starting to have little kind of work nooks, or they're renaming the uh, den, like a work area. But I'm starting to see a lot and a lot and a lot of people starting to do this kind of thing in condo buildings. They're making dedicated spaces that people can go and share, kind of like a we work arrangement. And I posed the question on the show this weekend, you know, is this a good idea? Is it a good idea for all of these developers to rearrange the spaces that they are building? Or is this just a short term issue that people are reacting to? and uh, you know, making mistakes for the long-term future. And what was discussed on the show is that this is kind of a situation that is being accelerated, not exacerbated by the current conditions in the world being in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, I know for a fact that even on the property that I'm working on, we are thinking heavily about making a co-working space. Um, and it seems to me, based on this article here, that there are quite a few others. We've got Menkes mentioned in here, Minto mentioned in here, uh, Altera mentioned in here. And these are a lot of the uh, big boys, Empire Communities, uh, Center Court, Everybody now, it seems, is really kind of thinking about doing things differently. And I think it's a good idea. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Every, every development needs common area spaces for people to use one way or another. Um, I get the feeling that a lot of these common area spaces don't really get used that often, uh, but I'm sure some of them do. Um, but I wanted to put that out there. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you think this is short-sighted or you think this is a long-term trend, uh, we're also looking at an article that says why Toronto's office towers aren't dead yet. And it basically goes on to, you know, say that most, even though most of the big banks and Facebook, Twitter, Shopify, all of them are keeping their current uh, employees at home or at least giving them options to stay at home. Uh, most of them are actually taking on more and more space. It talks about at the beginning that Scotiabank is actually vacating 
the top floors of its Scotia Plaza head office tower in Toronto, but then later on it goes on to mention that they are the lead tenant in a new massive development. Um, I believe it is the one near Union Station. Um, and basically, despite the current surplus, developers are adding several million square feet of prime office and retail space to Toronto's inventory. Um, these guys are doing it because before the pandemic hit, there was a gigantic, gigantic need for all this space. And their predictions, as well as mine, quite honestly, are that um, this the trends before the pandemic will definitely continue once this, uh, you know, ends. I don't know if it ever ends, but whenever it starts to look more, resemble more like it did before, I think that the office situation in downtown Toronto is going to be very different. I think most of those spaces, all those spaces, plus all the new ones online are definitely going to fill up. Um, and then we have another article here that kind of I think speaks to a bottom here, but uh, maybe not. Toronto rent prices expected to rise this year year after months of decline and i've been saying it all along i really truly believe that this rental thing is temporary we have nobody not nobody but we have barely anybody compared to what we're used to immigrating into the city we have no students allowed to come in to go to school so that rental pool and i you know as we talked about on the show a few times most of the people that have been hit by this pandemic are renters. They are the ones that are kind of losing those lower paying jobs in the entertainment industry, retail industry, restaurant industry. Um, so it's really the renters that have been hit the hardest and a lot of them have had to move out of downtown or their, you know, their offices don't need them at the office. So there's all kinds of reasons in the downtown rental market for why it actually dropped considerably. But there will be many, 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 many more reasons why it will take off and go blowing past the levels that we saw before the pandemic. That's my opinion, whatever it's worth. But I think a combination of all these things are definitely starting to show signs that we are coming out of the downtown office and rental uh, issues that we we're having as a result of the pandemic. Um, and I think people will definitely work from home more than they used to, of course. And I think a lot of people are enjoying working from home and a lot of people are desperate to get back to the office. And I think, you know, with all of these options, uh, it's not like, you know, all of the rental units that are available right now. I, I don't think any of them have the ability to really work from home unless they're a two or a three bedroom. So all this new stuff will get absorbed by people that are okay having that stuff. And for people that don't need that stuff, they don't have to live there. And uh, there'll be more and more things coming online. And the beautiful thing about being a developer is that you can change your mind before you build the, the building. Uh, if you realize that the trends are changing, all of a sudden that little workspace becomes something else. Um, or stays the same. So... It looks to me like this is probably a new trend that will last. I don't think it will be, you know, everybody's not going to be working from home and a lot of people are not going to be working from home and a lot of people are dying to get back to the office and people will start coming back as jobs start coming back downtown and they're going to start renting places. And when they open up the immigration, when they start bringing in 400,000 people into Canada a year over the next few years, and if it's not this year, it's next year and the year after that, which is a ton more than we've seen here for a long time. And if it doesn't happen this year, I'm sure they'll push it into the fourth year and they'll change those projections. And, this place will be swimming with people that need to rent something and live somewhere. So I believe the bottom is here for the rental office and rental residential. And I could be wrong. It won't be the first time and it won't be the last time.